And joining me now, a man who knows that better than just about anybody breathing, P.H. Narjulet, the director of underwater research for premier exhibitions. He has been down to the Titanic wreck more than 30 times. And interesting that that storied ship sank 102 years ago uh, tonight. P.H., uh, good to talk to you from Boston. School us a little bit about just the conditions. Pitch black, incredible pressure. How does this search compare to the work you did on the Titanic? Well, it's the same kind of search because we are looking for a debris field in the Titanic. You have two big parts of the Titanic, but there is a huge uh, debris field where you can find a lot of things like uh, going from China to a piece of the wreck, anything like that. And it's the same condition, of course, it's totally dark and you have to use uh, some light and uh, to see anything. You, we are also using a sonar. We can detect some uh, equipment. We were using also pinger on this debris field, you know, because we want to mark some uh, some special uh, place, you know, and uh, retrieve that. But it was very hot with this pinger anyway. What do you make of this blue fin as, as a search tool? Oh, it's, uh, you know, the, the AUV in general are a very good tool because they are close to the bottom. They, they follow the bottom exactly. The only problem is they have a battery. You don't have uh, a return of the data immediately. You have to download when the, uh, at the end of the dive. And you don't know, you have some information from, uh, from the AUV telling you if he's working well, where he is, you know, the position and stuff like that. But you don't see what the AUV see, even if it's a sonar. You have some AUVs that can give you some information, but they are not very, very high resolution for a question of using the battery. That's a big problem. Yeah, you've got to set it down, let it work, pull it up, and then see what it Exactly. Let's see what it found. Do you do you yeah. do you think that this plane is intact in any way? I mean, what do you think is the biggest piece it would be looking for? You know, imagine that a plane is trying to land on a on the sea with a swell, like maybe the swell is between 10 to 20 feet high, and just at the instant of the plane touch the water, frozen everything. You will have a bumpy you know, landing pad. And do you think that uh, 777 can land on something like that with no damage? Is, of course, I'm 100% sure the plane explode in little pieces. It was possible on the Hudson River, like we know a few years ago in New York, but it was absolutely flat. But at sea, even a seaplane cannot, you know, land any, uh, well, I land or on, on the sea if there is a little bit of sw uh, a swell or anything like that. Well, where, where's the debris then? Why, why in 39 days have we not seen a, even a cushion, nothing? Yeah, from my point of view, if we don't see any debris, the plane is not there. It's, it's so simple, uh, I know. Because we should so find something. So they're looking something. in the wrong place, yeah. you think? Uh, that uh, I'm afraid, you know. Even with the pinger, are we sure it's the pinger of, of the black box? No. There is no way to understand if it really is a good pinger or not. There is no... They are all the same. All the pinger, they are all the same frequency or the same signal. There is no distinction possible with this pinger. It, until we find something, a piece of anything from the plane or anything from the passenger, we cannot be sure that the plane was there.